Hey guys, welcome to No Ordinary Woman Chat Show. I'm your host, Miss Kazmak. Now guys, every time when you come onto this channel, you meet some amazing, phenomenal, extraordinary women who are doing fabulous things within our community. Now, I need you to watch this advert, join me on the other side, and meet the phenomenal woman that we have on set today. See you in a bit. Wagwan, we are say, wam. My name Taya and me and one Zuri doll from the beautiful island of Jamaica. We have the best beaches and sunshine all through the year. We love with your chicken and rice and peas. But most of all, we love the party and have a good time. We probably give you reggae music and Bob Marley. Next time I go to Jamaica, you have to come too. In Jamaica, we say no problem, man, no respect, and one love to the world. Hey guys, thank you for watching the advert and thank you for staying with me. We have an amazing, phenomenal, no ordinary woman on the set right now. I'm not even going to brag or go into it, but we have Anika Allen live with me right now. I'm so excited. Anika, <laughs> welcome to No Ordinary Woman Chat Show. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being <laughs> here. So do tell our viewers who you are, what you do. Um, well, I'm the kind of woman that wears many hats. You know, they say the jack of all trades, master of number. Um, Jack of a few trades, but master of them all. So hey, <laughs> Chale, I like this woman all. <laughs> okay, so I'm the co-owner of um entertainment platform, The Colour Network, which um I'm in partnership with um Kojo, the comedian. Yay. So he's my business partner there. And mm -hmm. We've got lots of amazing things happening in that area, from productions to workshops to um awards so many Black Magic Awards, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Yes, this definitely. Combo. And um, I'm also so I'm an entrepreneur, and I also do digital marketing. So I'm an expert in that area, and I've done that for a variety of brands and oh my businesses. Goodness. That's amazing. <laughs> so how did the opportunity come arise for you to work with Kojo in terms of doing your network and you know your actual um, platform for other producers to be able to put their short films out there yeah. and things like that? How did that all come about? Um, well, I've worked in digital for a number of years, and I used to have I used to own another platform called Flavor Mag, which, um, which was a youth entertainment platform. And I've known Kojo for a long time. Um, we've been friends for a long time. We even actually share the same birthday randomly. Oh wow! And um, and so he had an idea to do the Color Network, and at the time he approached me and said, oh, "I've got this idea to this platform. You see, you've done digital. You've also worked in production previously, well, so I think actually we'd make a good team mm -hmm. to make this happen. What you're saying, and it kind of." developed from there so we kind of just kind of sat down put a plan together and you know created the website did a launch party and kind of just <laughs> and it's taken off from there that's amazing and what i like about your platform as well in what you both have done is that it allows other upcoming actresses and um, presenters and people yeah. like that to be able to have a platform on your actual network as well yeah. i mean in regards to how do young people even connect with you how did how does that Okay. Well, there's the management side of the business. Um, Kojo hands a, a lot of that side. So for actors or presenters and talent, and we look at them first when we're doing our own kind of casting for production. So um, there's going to be um, Kojo wrote a play a few years ago called Above Romance, and that's going to be in theatres um, February from in London, Manchester, and Birmingham. And so we'd cast from within within our talent network. So again, it's just getting contact with us via our socials or email. And you know, send CVs, show reels, and things, and we can take it from there. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, and we do lots of workshops and seminars. So people just need to just look out for them on our via our website and social media. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And in regards to you, because you're a journalist, yeah, yeah, you come from a journalism background. How did you even get there? I mean, yeah. did you always wanted to be a journalist from since you was a child? Yeah, from the age of eight, I always knew what I wanted to be. So I used to, always know I wanted to be in the media. Journalism was the first port of call. Back then, it was a presenter. Though I used to want to be a war reporter, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to, I don't know, Iraq and be reporting. And then I realised, as I got older, I realised, oh, actually, you can die because you can get blown <laughs> up, you can get kidnapped. Um, so actually, let me let scratch that. Yeah. And, um, and so... In, in Birmingham, um, there was a local magazine called Street Cred Magazine and um, local newspapers like the Birmingham Mail and Birmingham Post. And I just kind of um, did work experience at those mag um, Street Cred Magazine when I was a teenager. And that's when I did started doing my first kind of celebrity interviews. Okay, and so, so who um, did you interview? I had lots of people from like Total to 112. Oh, wow. Coming down to London to interview like Jermaine Dupree. I remember um, when I was... 15 the very first so i did those with the editor um 
of the magazine, a guy called Mark Dwayne. And um, when I was 15, this is when I did my first celebrity interview by myself. And so do you remember Titania Alley, who was in um, yeah, Fresh Prince, Prince of Bel Air? Yeah. So at the time, she had just released her song, Daydreaming. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that song. And, um, and I was in Birmingham City Centre and I saw a local DJ. Yeah. And he said he was going to interview. And I said, like, I'm coming with you. He was like, you can't just come with me. And I was like, why not? I, I want to come and interview her. And, and I was like, whoever you need to call, call them, because I'm coming. And so he called up, um, he called them up, and they were like, yeah, it's fine, tell her to come along. And that's when I did my first interview by myself, and then got it published, and, and I thought, ah, this is, this is an area that I actually really enjoy and really like. And yeah. so that's kind of how the celebrity and entertainment side of things kind of came about. Wow, that's amazing. And mm. you was only, what, 15, you said? Mm, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, at that time, because for you to even um, know that you wanted to be a presenter and things like that, who was inspiring you at that particular time to make guess, you want to go there? Well, that's the, I guess that's the strange thing. I had to know that I could be it, even though I couldn't see it, because mm. there was nobody around me that was working in the creative industries, mm. nobody that I could see doing what I wanted to do. Um, luckily, I had the kind of um, mum that didn't put any kind of limiting beliefs on me. She, like, if I said I wanted to do something, she was always very supportive. You go on, then you can do anything you yeah. want. You can do anything you want, and so she was always very encouraging. Yeah. And um, so I think that's why it didn't. I wasn't deterred by not seeing anybody. I just kind of was very fearless and very um, driven to mm -hmm. achieve what I wanted to achieve. And so I'm um, just kind of planned. Said, okay, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do media, and then I'm going to move to London. I'm going to do. A, degree in journalism so I just mapped it all out and said this wow. is what I'm gonna do and, and then, that was from the tender age of like 15 yeah and so um and then when I got to London I was at university I was like okay who do I need to write for so I started writing for like Pride magazine New Nation newspaper the voice newspaper and lots of other different kind yeah. of publications around that time that's amazing yeah. and the fact that you know at such an age of 15 you know because you, you know there's a lot of say teenagers that have like say identity um, mm. issues within themselves or they may be going through various issues maybe dealing with their skin complexions or yeah. you know dealing with various different things but you know is there anything that you actually face at the time even whilst you had that plan yeah that you was you know obstacles that came your way no because my family um so my background is Jamaican and my fam family are very unashamedly Jamaican. <laughs> they're, um, you know, they're, um, they're confident in who they are. They're, you know, um, I'm kind of on the line of the first generation of, um, of the kind of cousins where we all went to university. Right. And so, um, so, but I think because we had lots of cousins that were similar ages and we were all kind of inspired each other and would talk, we, ha we had that kind of network there to, mm. to be our cheerleaders and say, okay, wh what do you want to do? Where yeah. do you want to go? What do you and we, were all, we were all very determined. Yeah. So it's, it's funny because I've got lots of, being a, being a journalist and I've also worked in TV production, so I'm, I'm a very big, big on storytelling. Yeah. And so I've come across lots of different people, heard lots of different stories about, you know, their upbringing, how they've grown up. And, and when I look back, I just have to say, you know, actually, that God, thank you, because actually I had a really good, I had yeah. a really good childhood. I had a really good teenager. It was just very normal. Yeah, and, that's amazing. And, then, and I'm blessed because of that. Yeah. You know, my, although my mum was um, a single parent, it didn't, it wasn't, um, we, we had such a close-knit family that it didn't, it didn't matter. Like, we were, my, my nan was there, my cousins were there. And, and you know, it was just, it was just, yeah, a lovely time. <laughs> well, that's beautiful because it's that's so nice and it's so good to hear as well yeah. because there is a lot of various different families that are quite dysfunctional that don't have that story. As much as you said, you know, you come from a single parent family, but you still had all, it sounds like you had everybody there to enable you to be where you are today. Do you know what I mean? And it just mm. continues to have the love, the support, etc. Definitely. And I think that's that's um that's what that's what need, that's what people need to kind of make sure that they can get ahead. I mean, to be fair, my, my school was rubbish. My school was the worst school ever. Like it's changed about five times right. since I left. And I remember I didn't even have like an English teacher for the last year and a half I was oh, at school. Wow. Um, I remember my friend, my one of my best friends, Celia, and I. She she's actually an English teacher now, ironically, and we would we were the first year when the anthology came out, and we were sitting in class, and nobody else would be doing work, and we we weren't overly geeky mm. or anything, but we we liked English, so we'd be sitting in class, and we'd probably talk to each other, we're like, oh, what do you think this means here? Yeah. What do you think? And so literally, I think they got us a teacher like a month before we were due to do our GCSEs, and started panicking, and luckily, despite that, I managed to get two A's, and that's that's from 
not from having a teacher, yeah. but just because actually I was luckily Determin naturally yeah. determined and also yeah. naturally good at English. Yeah, so. that's good. Because a lot of young people, they don't, natu they don't have that. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. there's like, for myself, I'm not really the academic kind of student. I'm more of a visual person. Yeah. So for you and your, um, your best friend to be able to say, right, what does this mean and this, that and the other, you have to have that certain kind of, there needs to be a something built in you yeah. to make you be that kind of person because you could see, I mean, even, you know, just hearing about your story in terms of mm -hmm. the types of jobs you've had and everything else because, mm. I mean, have you even done like a nine to five, like a normal <laughs> nine to five? Because it seems like everything that you've done has been very creative. Yeah. But, you know, it, in regards to you getting those opportunities, did they just come to you? Did you work? In, oh God, in, in, in the creative industry, nothing just comes to mm. you. Nothing just comes to you because um, it's a very much who you know industry. You have to network, so you know, your network's your net worth. Like, I, I learned very early on that mm -hmm. one being from Birmingham and moving to London and not knowing anybody, okay, I need to put myself out there. Who are the people I need to know in order for me to be able to get ahead in the first place? So I'd go, I would look, look on, um, I would kind of read and subscribe to whatever what magazine I needed to subscribe to to find out, okay, who are the movers and shakers? What mm -hmm. events are happening? How can I get into that event? And, you know, just put my best, um, best foot forward because your reputation precedes you in, in in the media industry. So if you do a bad job, people will talk. If you yeah. do a good job, people, people will talk. talk. Yeah. And then recommend you for the next job. And that's kind of how it all started, just from me kind of meeting people and then um, do, making sure that I did a good job and um, and then moving on to the next mm. one. So I, just, so I freelance a lot. And when you freelance, because you're freelancing, so you're self-employed and... You, you have to make sure that you're kind of doing a good job, good job so you can get paid and get yeah, more work. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so the drive is different, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. I find even, you know, um, when you compare and look at, say, people, say, over the pond, you look at Americans and everything else, they have, yeah. I've noticed that they've got this different determination. The entrepreneurial spirit is just there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Kind of thing. If you don't work, you don't eat. But I find in this country, it's like we're a bit more relaxed. Do you yeah. know what I mean? How do you find that? Do you see that or...? Um. I think that, you know, people see things from the circle that they have around them. Mm. I've always kind of, I'm, I'm a big believer in kind of, you know, you, the kind of people around you, their energy, you thrive, you, um, you thrive off. So if you've got the kind of people that are negative or the kind of people that um, aren't kind of, aren't very ambitious or go-getters around you, then that might, that might demotivate you and yeah. you might not want to do that. Yeah. Um, whereas if you've got the kind of people that are, have got that kind of energy, then it, it prompts you to want to do yeah. that as well. Yeah. And so I've always kind of had those kind of people around me, luckily. And so I've, I've got a great tribe, a great set of cheerleaders um, that, that, you know, will support me. And so if I was doing an event, where do you need me on the door, Anika? Yeah. Do I need to? So you got people that's going to be yeah. there to support you. Do I need to be packing goodie yeah. bags? What 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 do you yeah. need from me to help you achieve what you need to achieve? Yeah. And and then it's also I'm not kind of and if things aren't working. So yes, I was a journalist for um started off as a journalist, but then living in London and um, being a journalist and people aren't paying your invoices on time, mm. then actually you're like ah oh, I need to eat. This bills are coming in, I yeah. need to be able to pay bills, but people, but people, people aren't paying me on so time. So how do you fa face things. those obstacles? So then I started thinking, okay, well, what can I do to, um, to bring in money more consistently? Um, what can I do to bring in more money more consistently, but still utilize the research skills, the creative skills, the people skills? And so that's when I migrated into TV production. Right. So I kind of started off as a runner and um, then just worked my way up from a runner to a producer. And again, I worked my way up quite quickly because I, I was kind of, when I was a runner, I hated being a runner. Runners are like dog's bodies. Yeah. You're like making the tea, you know, people shop, telling you what to do. Yeah. You're like at the, the bottom of the ladder and, and it's... And, yeah, people and just keep treating yeah. like crap. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the way I'm set up, like how, how people sometimes talk to runners, I was like, nah, mm. I, I can't be doing this job for very long. How, how do I move up? So I was like, okay, let me see what I can re research how, what's out there. And I found um, a scheme where you could go to um, a television festival in Edinburgh and learn more about the TV industry. And the scheme's still there today. What's the scheme um, called? It's called The Network. Um, right. And um, so I went to Edinburgh and you, you get to go to kind of different seminars, workshops and things and meet different people within the TV industry. And after that scheme finished, then they had an opportunity where you could apply to... Um, 
be on this researcher training program okay. and get mentored. And so I applied and then you had to do interviews with lots of different production companies and then they would decide if they want you. So I ended up being getting chosen by Talkback Thames who make The Apprentice and The X Factor wow. and working um, and working at that company for a year. And, and the, the mentors that I had, they were great because then when they um, moved on to um, other companies, then they would always recommend when me. You, yeah, and yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. So what would you say to a young individual that may want to actually get into the same industry as yourself? I mean, obviously, as you look today, yeah. uh, things have obviously changed from back in your time because everyone's doing like, the YouTube and, yeah. and things like that, obviously being in this platform. But even regardless of being able to have that platform, what would you still say to an individual that wants to get into yeah. that field? Um, so if you want to be a journalist, then, you know, just write, write, start your own blog, um, apply to kind of various newspapers and magazines, see if you can get an internship and get some work experience or shadow somebody, um, and then use that to get ahead. There's also, you know, um, broadcast journalism as well. So again, there's lots of opportunities out there to get work experience with different companies. If you can't get work experience, just do things yourself. So if it's TV production you want to work in, then you know, start your own vlog, start your own YouTube channel. You know, you can do, th there's so much you can do with phones these days that actually you don't even need professional equipment straight away. And sometimes, you know, actually um, starting off professionally, you, like you're better off starting here and then working up to here than, um, than try to start off really, really big. Um, so, you know, there's lots of apps that you can use from like quick to, um, if you've got an iPhone to, you know, iMovie that you can use to kind of edit your own stuff and just do little things depending on what it is you want to do. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there and just ask for feedback and just hone your craft. And the more the more you write, the more you film, the better you'll get. You know, practice makes perfection. Excellent. Thank you so much. But in regards to um, the other area of you, because I know you're passionate about young people, you tend to do a lot of work with young people, mentoring, doing talks, going to university, etc. Um, in regards to doing all of that, what, why with our young people, why are you so passionate about them? I guess when I was, when I was young, I never had um, anybody in this industry that I could go to for advice to shape, mm. to shape my destiny to, and to direct me in the right place. I had to learn it all for myself. Um, so, and I wish that somebody had been there because although I'm happy with um, the journey that I've been on, actually there's different paths that I know, from what I know now, there's a different path that I would have taken. Mm. And so I want to be able to, you know, be able to give give the kind of right advice or guidance to somebody that is beginning and starting out in that journey mm. so that they can say actually you know I've got this insight I've got the knowledge so whatever I, decision I make from here it's not it's not because I wasn't educated on mm. it but you know you said something in terms of this uh, you the certain path that you wouldn't have taken yeah. do you mind sharing that or not necessarily wouldn't have taken but I I always wanted to I've never I never fully saw myself working in this country. I always right. thought that I would, um, and even my mum would say it, like, I thought you were gonna go to, you know, like America or somewhere else kind of to work and things. And so there's lots of, but I didn't, but it's one of the things I didn't know how. Right. And, and now, um, and, and now I do, but yeah. there's lots of things here now that, um, that kind of cemented my place here, why, um, why I wouldn't go. But back then, it was the right time for me, yeah. but I just didn't know how. And so I, so I think my journey would have been different if... Um, if you had known if then, I, yeah. yeah, okay. So what other um, projects are you working on also? Um, God, there's lots. Um, so the main thing at the moment is back in September 2017, we had the Black, first ever Black Magic Awards. And so Black Magic, so have you ever watched Black Girls Rock? Yes. Yep. So, Black Girl, um, so Black Magic Awards is... Um, I guess you can say a UK equivalent, yeah. really, because I'm fed up of watching kind of like as much as I love black girls, black girl rock. Um, you know, sometimes just when you're fed up of just seeing the American yeah. women, it's actually like actually we have such amazing and talented women over here you know, that are doing fantastic things that are, you know, change makers, trailblazers yeah. in various industries from, you know, from working in the NHS to the media, yes. to music, to, you know, politics. Yeah. But at, why, why do why we not, not celebrate yeah. them? Yeah. You know, I always hear, particularly young people, saying there's no role models mm. here. And I just think, that's so wrong. There's, mm. There are so there's many so roles. Many. There are so many. You just, you just are not looking in the right places for them. Or, and also, people aren't putting them enough in your face to see them. But yeah. actually, they are there. Yeah. So, and 
being a black woman, you know that actually for, for us as black women in, in this society, it is harder, you know, because you're not the first when it comes to kind of like the beauty standard. Yeah. You're not the first that's celebrated when um, it comes to kind of trying to make your way up the corporate ladder if you're in that kind of mm. environment. You're, um, you're usually the last to try, you're the last get they're the, looking at to try mm -hmm, and get that's there, right. even if you're better than some of the yeah. other people and you've got the skills to get ahead. Mm -hmm. And so there's all sorts of obstacles in our way as black women. And so the, the people we celebrate at the Black Magic Awards, they face all those up yeah. obstacles, but despite that, they've still managed to get ahead and reach the top of their game. And so we wanted an event where we could just actually go, well done. Thank, well yeah. done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You've paved the way yeah. for the next person to be able to get ahead and know that they can do this in that industry. Yeah. And um, and so yeah, the event was amazing. It was really um, inspirational and motivational. We had um, lots of amazing and talented people yeah. attend. We had Stormzy come down and give out an award to um, one of our honorees, Jenny Francis, a oh, lady of soul. Brilliant. Yeah, um, brilliant. The yeah. Choice of M. Um, Angela Marr received an honor, Jasmine Dottiwala, um, Vanessa Kingori, who obviously was at GQ then and now she's at Vogue. So That's just, amazing. And it's so beautiful when you hear about all yeah. of these um, individuals that we have living, existed in our UK. Mm -hmm. And you're right, you know, because we do need to celebrate these individuals. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Hence the reason why we even have this platform, just so that people exactly. know about all these other women who are doing amazing things. Because we can't always keep on looking at everybody else. Let's look at what we've got right now. Exactly. And let's continue with that, you know. So well done Thank to you, you for doing that. But also you do a podcast that you can't yeah. come on as well. So um to continue um to continue the legacy of the Black Magic Awards, we launched um the po podcast of the Black Magic Podcast. And so that's to continue the stories of black women and it's a chance to kind of just talk to bri brilliant and resilient women, you know, women that are ordinary but also extraordinary ordinary, that's as well. right yeah and, to, um, and just to continue their story so you know we talk about their successes their challenges and, and their life stories and it's just amazing to kind of sit down and just hear what some of these women have gone through kind of personally and professionally and and to give them an opportunity just to speak their truth yeah. in an environment where they feel comfortable enough to do that yeah definitely yeah. so people can um and so if people want to listen, they can get it on iTunes, Acast, Stitcher, Google Play. It's, um, it's out there. So people just need to listen and subscribe. <laughs> you guys heard that. So yeah. do share your social media platforms whilst you're at it. Cool. Um, so people, if you want to get in touch with me, it's Anika Allen on everything, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, all of that. And if you want to um, get in touch with The Colour Network, it's The Colour Network on Instagram and Facebook and The Colour Net on Twitter. Thank you so much. So what upcoming events have you got coming up for 2018? And so 2018 um, for International Women's Month, we'll be doing, um, we're hoping to do a Black Magic Live. Um, we see the Black Magic Awards again, so our second one back in, um, it'll be in September again. Okay. Um, so they're the main kind of things that we focus on. Then we'll have like seminars and workshops people that work in production that mm -hmm. want to get ahead and connect and we'll be working on very variety of different productions from short series to kind of um to shorts to web series and things so yeah there'll be a lot of amazing things happening excellent i'm ex so excited mm -hmm. and well done i just want to say you know really salute yourself and Koja for what you're doing and what Thank you've you. done allowing other individuals to be able to you know have this platform and even sharing like your short films and even what you guys are doing as well just putting it out there because we we need that do you know what i mean we can't always keep on looking across at everybody else we need that right now Definitely. and just well done and also because you obviously don't have work with our young people as well mm -hmm. um do you want to do you mind going there at all um yeah i mean um i guess it depends like i i had a contract for two years for a, with a youth charity called urban development where i used to do um a lot of um kind of youth training and seminars for young people to attend that wanted mm -hmm. to get into the creative industry work with different organizations doing kind of mentoring and or speed mentoring as well with um with young people and going to schools and colleges and yeah. universities so yeah if people want me to do those kind of things they just need to get in touch because i'm always happy yeah, to <laughs> work with and work with young people and things to let them know that you know you can you know your dreams are possible they're mm. valid you can regardless of what's going on in your life that you can get to where you need to get to okay great mm -hmm. thank you so much so guys i hope you was blessed by the show i know i was blessed i'm so excited but until next time you'll meet another no ordinary woman on the chat show see ya mm -hmm. bye mm -hmm.